He is known for including a handwritten text in Latin on his famous map of North America, claiming to have discovered North America in 1494. He is recognized for potentially changing the date to show that the first travel to North America was funded by Castilians or by Portuguese, and not by English or French. His name is Sebastian Cabot. Sebastian Cabot, a skilled explorer and navigator, embarked on a series of expeditions that would solidify his legacy in the annals of exploration. In 1504, he led an expedition from Bristol to the New World, commanding two ships, Jesus of Bristol and Gabriel of Bristol. These ships, captained by Richard Savory and Philip Keetiner, were prepared for the journey by Robert Thorne and Hugh Elliot. The voyage had both commercial and exploratory purposes, as evidenced by the collection of salted fish brought back. This successful venture garnered the attention and recognition of King Henry VII, who granted Cabot an annuity of £10 for his services in finding the newfound lands. Seeking to push the boundaries of exploration further, Cabot led another expedition from 1508 to 1509 in search of a northwest passage through North America. His achievements during this expedition are often credited with reaching high latitudes, where he encountered vast fields of icebergs and reported the existence of a potential open water passage. Unfortunately, adverse conditions forced Cabot to turn back before fully realizing his goal. Some accounts suggest that he may have reached as far as the entrance of Hudson Bay. Undeterred by the challenges faced on his previous expedition, Cabot set his sights on further exploration along the east coast of North America. According to Peter Martyr's account in 1516, Cabot sailed south, passing the abundant fishing grounds off the coast of Newfoundland. His journey continued until he found himself in almost the latitude of Gibraltar and almost the longitude of Cuba. These geographical references imply that he possibly reached as far as the Chesapeake Bay, near present-day Washington, D.C. Regrettably, upon his return to England, Cabot received news of King Henry VII's passing and the ascension of King Henry VIII, who showed less enthusiasm for exploration compared to his father. In 1512, Cabot's expertise as a cartographer earned him employment under King Henry VIII. He provided the king with a map of Gascony and Guienne, showcasing his skill and knowledge. That same year, Cabot accompanied the Marquis of Dorset's expedition to Spain where he was appointed captain by Ferdinand V. While Cabot believed that Spain held greater interest in undertaking significant exploration, his hopes of gaining Ferdinand's support were dashed by the king's untimely demise. In the subsequent political turmoil, plans for new expeditions were put on hold, and Cabot returned to England. Towards the end of his life, Cabot was associated with a voyage in 1516 under the English flag, according to Richard Eden, a scholar and translator who became acquainted with Cabot. This account, supported by various British writers of the early 19th century, has been connected to a known expedition in 1517 that Cabot may not have been directly involved in. Additionally, historian Alwyn Ruddock associated Eden's story of opposition to Cabot's plans by Thomas Spert, the future master of the king's ship Mary Rose, with Cabot's expedition of 1508 to 1509. In 1521, Cabot made a notable effort to organize and lead an English discovery voyage to North America. With the support of King Henry VIII and Cardinal Wolsey, as well as some backing from merchants in Bristol and London, Cabot hoped to fulfill his vision. However, the Draper's Company expressed their doubts about Cabot, offering only limited financial support. The response of other livery companies remains unknown. Ultimately, the project was abandoned, and Cabot returned to Spain. In the bustling city of London, Sebastian Cabot found happiness in marriage to his beloved Joanna. Together, they built a life filled with love and joy, and their family grew with the arrival of their children. The years were filled with laughter and the warmth of a loving household. However, destiny had other plans for Sebastian. In 1512, Sebastian entered Spanish service, a journey that would take him far from the comforts of his London home and his cherished family. With a heavy heart, he bid farewell to Joanna and embarked on a new chapter of his life, far away from his loved ones. On September 14, 1514. In 1512, Sebastian Cabot, recognizing the financial support being offered by King Ferdinand II of Aragon, made the decision to leave his home in England and relocate to Spain. He believed that Spain offered better opportunities for exploration and advancement in the field. His expertise and experience made him a valuable asset to the Spanish crown, and he quickly found himself involved in various roles within the Council of the Indies. Holding the prestigious rank of pilot major, Cabot was entrusted with the supervision of naval and navigator training, ensuring that Spain maintained its edge in exploration and discovery. In 1522, Cabot, always eager for new challenges, secretly attempted to secure his services to Venice. 
through communications with the Council of Ten, he made an offer to find the fabled Northwest Passage to China for the Venetians, in exchange for their support. However, his intentions were discovered, and his loyalty was questioned. On March 4, 1525. In the year 1553, Sebastian Cabot found himself discussing a potential voyage to China and rejoining the service of Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, with Jean Sheaf, the King's Ambassador in England. Cabot had always been captivated by the idea of reaching the exotic lands of the East and had previously sailed on an exploratory mission to these regions. However, negotiations with Venice, a potential partner in this venture, did not yield a favorable outcome. Nevertheless, Cabot continued to be involved in English voyages for the discovery of the elusive Northwest Passage. His expertise and knowledge made him an invaluable advisor in these endeavors. In 1553, he assumed the role of governor of the Muscovy Company, which aimed to establish trade routes to Russia and beyond. Cabot also collaborated closely with the renowned scholar and mathematician, John Dee, in preparing for an expedition led by Sir Hugh Willoughby and Richard Chancellor. During this period, Cabot's influence and contributions were recognized, as he was appointed as the life governor of the Company of Merchant Adventurers. He played a significant role in equipping the expedition led by Stephen Burrow in 1557, furthering the exploration and expansion of English trade ventures. Cabot's expertise and guidance were crucial in navigating the treacherous waters and harsh conditions of the northern regions. However, by February 1557, Cabot was replaced as governor of the Muscovy Company, marking a turning point in his later years. It is recorded that he began receiving a quarterly pension, which he initially collected in person. Yet, as time passed, it became evident that Cabot's health was deteriorating. In June and September 1557, someone else picked up his pension on his behalf, indicating that he was unable to do so himself. Sadly, by December of that year, no one was paid, which suggests that Sebastian Cabot had passed away by then. During this period, Sebastian Cabot, the renowned explorer and navigator, found himself at the center of a historical controversy that would greatly impact his reputation. The prevailing belief among historians was that Sebastian, rather than his father John, had led the famous Bristol expeditions of the late 1490s, through which North America was discovered by Europeans. This misconception stemmed from Sebastian's own accounts in his later years, which inaccurately portrayed his involvement in these expeditions. This erroneous attribution had significant consequences for Sebastian's reputation. Influential geographical writer Richard Hakluyt perpetuated the idea that John Cabot was merely a figurehead, while Sebastian was the true leader of the expeditions. This distorted narrative created the perception that Sebastian had purposely claimed his father's achievements as his own. As a result, Sebastian faced severe denigration and disparagement, particularly from Henry Harris, who accused him of appropriating his father's accomplishments. The repercussions of this controversy reverberated throughout the 20th century, as Sebastian received considerably less attention and recognition compared to his father. His contributions to exploration and discovery were overshadowed and disregarded. However, as the century progressed, new documentary evidence emerged, vindicating Sebastian's role in the expeditions. Archival finds in the 19th century unveiled the truth, demonstrating that it was indeed John Cabot who led the Bristol expeditions. Sebastian's involvement, though not as prominent as previously believed, was established through summarized accounts. It became clear that Sebastian had led his own exploratory voyages from Bristol in the early 16th century, further solidifying his place in history. Despite the controversy surrounding his reputation, Sebastian's significance in the annals of exploration cannot be disregarded. His navigational skills and endeavors paved the way for future explorations and expanded the European understanding of the Americas. A.C.H. Smith, recognizing the unjust treatment Sebastian had endured, wrote a biographical novel titled, Sebastian the Navigator, seeking to portray him in a more accurate light. In conclusion, Sebastian Cabot's experience of reputation was marked by initial misinterpretations that led to the denigration of his achievements. However, subsequent documentary findings confirmed his true contributions and reinstated his place in history as a notable explorer and navigator. If you want to discover more adventurers on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button for my channel, and don't forget to leave a comment in the section below, telling us which adventurers you'd like us to feature next.